Hey, what's up guys? It's your girl Ariana coming in with another vlog, I guess. And today, I will be sharing with you guys the career talk I gave at Assumption College San Lorenzo to senior high school Hume's students. So I actually graduated from Assumption and I was so just honored to be giving a career talk. I know I'm just 21 and I don't really have that much advice, but I thought I could share some of the things that I've learned uh, along the way and since I was young. So I hope you enjoy this one, guys. Hey guys, so this is me, Emma Ariana Everson. Next. Um, so I was in AC, these are some of my friends. I was in the volleyball varsity and my club was MTB. So our, if any of you guys are from there, hello. There's no MTV? Oh, okay, there is. Good. All right. <laughs> Next, uh, I'm from De La Salle University. I actually graduated just uh, two weeks ago. Um, okay, so anyway, actually, just a little bit of background. I chose La Salle mainly because of the course. Um, but growing up, I really wanted to go to Ateneo. And it's not that I did get in. I got in. It's just that when I went to La Salle, I had this epiphany. Kind of like, oh my god, I belong here. So. Go to Sal, Animo. Okay, anyway. Okay, so you're probably wondering what do I do anyway? So I made a little timeline. So I've been a working student since I was a kid almost. So I've been blogging since I was 13. I've been a YouTuber since I was 16. I've been a BJ since I was 18. And lastly, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 20. And right now I'm 21. Okay. So I'll just like, you know, like, why though? Why would I do that? So I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about myself and kind of why I chose this career path. So next. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm very shy and introverted. Maybe it's not obvious because I'm here, but I'm like shaking. Um, next is, I actually grew up in front of the camera. My dad's a photographer and my mom is a stylist. So I was always like the model or I'd always be around their photo shoots and stuff. So I'm kind of used to that. I'm just pretending you guys are cameras. Um, and lastly, my parents are actually very supportive. So whatever I kind of wanted to do while I was younger, they were very supportive of that. So like if I wanted to take cooking classes, they'd bring me. If I wanted to dance, whatever, they were just there for me. And I'm so grateful for that. Uh, next, some of my interests, I'm just really into creative stuff. So that might be like music, art, fashion, beauty, food, travel, and just in general, sharing things, which is why I'm here with you guys, because I want to share some stuff. Which leads me to, uh, I really turned a lot of my passions into my career. And if you do what you love and love what you do, you'll really not feel like your job is a job. You're just getting paid for things you like doing, so that's the secret, guys. Okay, so I really didn't know what to do after high school, to be honest, because I was blogging and blogging already. So does anyone here know exactly what they want to do? <laughs> All right, girl, you, we got some people who know what they want to do. But to you guys who do not know what you want to do, I have one tip for you guys. It's very easy in concept, but it, it takes a lot of effort, OK? So I, I screamed it out on the slide. You have to try out as many things as possible to figure out the things that you want to do or that you like. So do you ever feel like you're just one of those people who's like, I'm not really like into anything, not really passionate about anything? Yeah? Well, well, how are you going to know what you like if you've never tried doing anything else? Am I right? So very, I was very shy, very introverted. I couldn't even go to like a mini stop and buy food and you don't even have to talk to the cashier, right? You just have to give them the money. I couldn't even do that. So my steps for kind of getting out of my comfort zone was my mom guided me, and I think it takes a lot of visualization. Like, okay, you're just going to go in there, you're just going to buy it, and that's it. So that's kind of like how I overcame my fear. So if you guys are scared about doing anything, you just have to visualize the positive outcome or any outcome so that you're prepared for it. So make sure to try out a lot of things. Okay. So here is the actual career talk. So OK, I'm going to talk about each one of my careers and the, like kind of how they work. I didn't really think about making a career out of them. They're just things that I found that were fun. And uh, I didn't expect to make money out of it, but I'll, I'll kind of tell you how. So I have my website. It's arianaeperson.com. And I have my YouTube channel, which is YouTube slash Ariana Everson. So it's mainly focused about me sharing things, of course, uh, focus on style, travel, BD videos. Same kind of with my YouTube channel as well. Um, I just really like sharing content that was very interesting to me and things that I love. 
So being a blogger and a vlogger allowed me to do a lot of different things. So I got to travel to Boracay for the Lind, Malaysia for Air Asia. I went to Taiwan for Duran Travel and Singapore for Ultra with Mercedes Benz. So that's pretty cool. Um, I got to collab with a lot of different brands. So here are just some. We have like Forever, H&M, Calvin Klein, Mega Mall, Levi's, Keds, Melissa, Joe Fresh, Pandora, Bayana, Coach. I don't know why it's missing, but that's Beauty Bar. Um, Happy Skin, Love L'Oreal, Benefit. Olay Clinique, Bob Brown, Coca-Cola, Mercedes-Benz, Mazda, Air Asia. That's just some of the few that I can like remember off the top of my head. But it's really cool because I get to collaborate with brands that I love. So I also got to be on the cover of some magazines as well. So I was on Scalp for August 2015, Mega, Style PH, and I've also worked with Preview, Candy Magazine, Meg, Philippine Toddler. And so on. <laughs> I can't remember them all. I didn't want to have like a hundred slides or something. So for me, the brands that I've collaborated with are the ones that I genuinely love and I'm interested in because how can you work with someone that you're not like interested in? Or at least it's difficult, right? Like you can do that. Like I could have worked with, I don't know. Like, I'm not into cars, right? But I, you saw I worked with Mercedes and Mazda. Well, Mercedes is really cool. They actually sponsored part of Ultra Singapore, and that's a music festival. Uh, it's all EDM, so of course I worked with them because it was music related. Uh, with Mazda on the other hand, I specifically learned how to drive just so I could drive their car, and so they gave me a car for free for like three months. And then, they, no, but then they gave me a discount if I wanted to buy it, so I ended up buying the car. Okay, anyway. I mean, like, I've always grown up buying my own stuff. Like, my parents, very supportive, but also encouraged me to, like, earn my own and spend on my own things that I like. So. I've never been given an allowance, by the way. That's, like, crazy, right? Yeah, I don't even know how I did it. Okay, anyway. Um, okay, so me as an MTV and OPM TV VJ, so I'll give you a background for how I actually became one. Uh, so here, there was an MTV VJ hunt in 2014, and that's exactly when I graduated from high school and started college in La Salle. So two months into being in La Salle, uh, they had this VJ hunt where they like had different mall like shows, and then you can go and audition. So there are probably thousands of people who auditioned. You're like I had mine in Glorieta Activity Center. You know how they have like a big screen there. Yeah, my face was projected, but I was in a booth and I didn't know that. So when I walked out, I was like, Oh my god! I just like. You know, auditioned in front of like hundreds of people. So they had a screening down to 30 people, then down to eight. Um, there, we were the final eight, and then we had one final competition and a reality TV show, and they picked three out of the eight of us. So that's kind of my journey and how it started. You're probably wondering, like, how did you work and go to school at the same time? It's because at least Viva or my agency is very flexible, so a lot of my taping days would be like the weekend, it's like four to six times a month. Or sometimes I'd have to actually skip school to go to work or vice versa, I'd have to not go to work to go to school. It's all about balance, okay? And then I get to have my own like uh, TV show and yeah, it was cool. Um, as a VJ also, it entails hosting, not necessarily for MTV and OPM TV, so I got to host this event for Forever 21, I have one for Abayanas, I've done Flawless, I, I've done a, a few hosting stuff already. I got to host Fusion Music Festival, if you don't know who that is, that's Lucky Blue Smith. He is a sweetheart, I love him, but he's a child now, so I mean, I mean like, everyone's like, oh my god, I ship you guys, and like, okay guys, I'm gonna make it happen, but then, you know, like a few months later, it's like, I have a child, and I'm like, okay, I support you, but like, I love you, so he is really cool, I hosted his meet and greet as well with some of his fans. Um, okay, so here, again, I have my own show, and I got to host a lot of stuff. Um, you know, it's weird because, like what I said, I grew up in front of the camera, but I'm very shy. So, I guess in front of the camera, I, I bloomed, you know, like a butterfly coming out of a cocoon. Like, I just felt, hey, I could do this because, you know, you're just talking to the camera, you're not talking to people, you're talking about music. Yeah, that's totally normal, that's fine, right? But, you know, in the end, I did have to do some socializing by meeting some people. I also got to go to a lot of free concerts, so I got to see the 1975 twice. I got to meet the Vamps. 
If you know Brad, he was like, you want to dry mango? And I do not like dry mangoes. And I was like, yeah, I love these. I took it because, you know, how can you deny that face? So <laughs> I also went to Wonderland 2015. This is Youngblood Hawk and Lewis Watson. I got to meet Jungle Giants and all the other performers there. Uh, I got to go to Good Vibes Music Festival that was headlined by Passion Pit and Churches. And I got to go to Paradise International Music Festival, which was with Kanye and was going fun. All right. And I got to meet James and the Dean. I don't know if you've seen this photo, but it actually became a meme because if you don't see it here, but in the back, you see the photo, and I'm holding on to Nadine, and my hand is here because I don't want to touch James, right? And James's hand is like behind like this, hiding like a glass of champagne. And then the meme said, like, sorry girls, I'm loyal to Nadine because he's not touching me and I'm not touching him. So that's what viral, like 30,000 shares on Facebook. It's embarrassing, but like, I thought it was cool because it didn't make me look bad. It just made me look like, yeah, I'm not gonna touch some other man. Okay, and I met James again at a ball, and he was really nice too, so. There you have it. Okay, so like what I said, this definitely like forced me out of my comfort zone because I had to become more sociable. <laughs> oh my god, right? But uh, I don't forget it at all. I have so many good memories here and I'm glad that I can actually talk to people without like freaking out a lot. Okay, so uh, talking about being an entrepreneur, so always Sunday. Okay, I made this jacket, cool. But it has nothing to do with clothes. I just thought it would be cool to have a jacket. So uh, last September of 2017, my mom and I came out with our own skincare brand. It's called Always Sunday. It's all about like effortless, effective skincare products that are, you know, for every skin type, brings out your natural glow, enhancing your natural beauty. Everything's all natural, cruelty free, and we have a lot of vegan products as well. So I'm the co-founder and creative director there. That means I get to do a lot of the marketing collaterals. So I designed all the packaging, uh, take all of the photos, all the stuff for Instagram. I designed the website, the maintenance, social media management. And you're probably wondering how. It's because when I was younger, I was super into coding and Photoshop. So I guess I applied those skills a little bit later in my career. So that's kind of what we've done. So we have a lot of pop-up shops, but we're mainly based online so if you want to shop online go lang guys it's very affordable so we have like we made a spotify playlist it's called always sunday and chill uh, i made the instagram tile so if you look on our feed it's really cute it's like that i do the instagram stories i don't know if you know the second girl in the middle that's her sister um we're called the sass squad which is the shop always sunday squad and they're really like my best friends that i've known since i was a kid so i wanted like real girls endorsing our stuff along with myself because why not Deva? um so for me it's really turning my passion into action but you also have to put in the effort you know you can't just think okay i'm creative i'll, I'll just come out with this it's always a work in progress and I really was able to turn my vision to reality with my mom as well. She kind of handles more of the business side negotiation but I do all the creative stuff and everything that you see. So if you want, you can follow us on social media, write those down and you can also email me as well if you have any questions, you want to intern, I don't know, or if you have ideas because I know AC girls have ideas that are great. And uh, of course you can also follow me on Instagram and stuff. I always like reply to everyone and you can DM me whatever. Like even get like love life like questions and <laughs> I don't know. So feel free to message me there. So um, that kind of wraps up what I do, but I wanted to leave you guys with some tips. So to the first one, I think I kept reiterating it. It was to challenge yourself to step out of your comfort zone. Like. For me, the quote that sticks with me is always, don't let the fear of looking stupid stop you from being awesome. Right? I yeah. 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 yeah! yeah! So sometimes I think a lot of us fear failure and like embarrassing ourselves in front of people. Like, if I messed up now, I don't think it would bother me so much because I know that it's not going to be super memorable. Like 10 years from now, no one's really going to remember this. But I hope you, you know, keep some of this stuff with you as well, right? So also don't forget the value of hard work. You have to put in the time and the effort, especially when you challenge yourself to do something that's a bit difficult. Okay, um, next one is to build your network and credentials. So I think it's important to always make connections, like the people you meet when you're at work, when you're at school, 
you have to make sure to be grateful for those people who've helped you out in life because you really can't go about life alone, right? So you have to be very grateful and thankful for those people who are around you and helping you because it really doesn't help to be an entitled little poop. So <laughs> um, kindness goes a long way, especially in this industry. Uh, next is to turn your passions into paychecks. So I know, I mean, it's like, um, sometimes you might feel embarrassed, especially as an artist, to charge for your work, right? Right now, I feel like creativity is such a commodity, but it shouldn't be that way, okay? So if you're an artist, if you have creative talents, you better be charging for it, okay? Because you shouldn't be embarrassed to make money. I know they say it doesn't buy happiness, but it buys freedom, guys. If you want to travel, if you want to get a car, if you want to buy yourself a computer or something, how if you don't have money? So don't be afraid to make money as well, okay? Um, next is to find your support system. I think it's super duper important to have people around you or to be surrounded by those who will always help you out on your journey. For me, it's a time's up, but I have one more tip after this, okay? For me, it, in, in high school, which is a bit sad, is that a lot of my friends made fun of me for my YouTube channel and vlogging and even becoming a DJ, right? So imagine the people who you thought you were closest to are the ones who are bringing you down. And the last thing you want are your friends, the people you love, bringing you down, right? So I think it's time for girls to start supporting girls because we are going to defeat the patriarchy and we are, are going to rise above, right? Guys, to greater horizons and stuff, okay? So, you know, I think for me, my support system were my family, of course, and my current friends right now. So we have to keep those people close. And lastly, is to be genuine and authentic. People can smell BS a mile away. Don't fake it, I swear, because the work and the love you put into your job, your career, will translate through that. So that's essentially it for me, and thank you. Yeah.